is the Fade 5 Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, you jack wagons! Brad the Big Noise Evans here, joined by the good son, Nathaniel Lundy. Tis indeed another edition of the Feed 5 Podcast. We're going to crown a couple of champs uh, in the AFC and also the NFC and get prepped. Uh, for some Super Bowl spots as uh, a couple of teams got to punch their ticket on this championship Sunday. So we're going to have some selections in the entire Fade 5 countdown and those two extremely meaningful games. Also, we're going to talk NBA, NHL, and college basketball. But first things first, got to hop aboard the Honk Honk Plus Bus and get some plus 100 odds or greater wagers on the board. Lundy, looking at the spectrum of sportsbook action, what catches your eye? Well, uh, first of all, Brad, uh, hold on while I oh, take a sip of my coffee here. I, dude, I, I tell you what, man, I woke up this morning, and for those of you who are only getting the audio broadcast, he is holding up a uh, Oregon State Beavers coffee mug. I was taken aback. I had to rub my eyes. I had to do not a triple take. I had to do like a quadruple take looking down at my phone. And I pulled up the Yahoo Sports app. And I'm like, oh, my God. I could not believe your Beavers beat Arizona at home. A terrible, bad loss of the resume for the Wildcats. It's going to haunt them come Selection Sunday. And the other action that really caught my eye, did you see the score in St. Mary's Pacific? Yes. Yes. 28 points for Pacific and uh, tie this back to gambling. Pacific is now three and 16 ATS dead last in that category this season. So up note, whoever they uh, take on next, just fade the Tigers. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Pretty ridiculous, but nice buzzer beater. Get to storm the court at Gill Coliseum there in Corvallis. Uh, That was, that was pretty. How many people storm? Like eight? No. Are you kidding? It's, Thursday night in Corvallis, Brad, there ain't jack shit to do. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. I know. Um, so I, I'm just saying, you know, you, you might as well go to the game. You got nothing else to do. Yeah, sure. uh, you know, you can, you can go hit the bars afterwards. All right. I got, uh, I got my gloating uh, out of the way. Uh, let me, let's see here, Brad. I'll tell you what, I'm going to save a couple uh, of fun ones for bonus time. Let me give you something really simple. There's only four games on the ice tonight in the National Hockey League. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche will be in action, which means Nathan McKinnon's probably already scored uh, as of the time that you and I have recorded this podcast. Holy crap. Is he doing stuff that people have never uh, seen uh, or at least haven't seen in a really long time? Um, this is going to be a fun game tonight against the Kings, but let me go up to the land of Starbucks. Let's take Seattle. They are hosting the St. Louis Blues, and I'm going to look for an anytime goal out of Jared McCann. You can catch that one at plus 210 odds, by the way, at BetMGM. I'm a little bit surprised to see his anytime goal above 200. I expected that to be a little bit more towards, say, 175 or 185, somewhere in that range. But the fact that BetMGM is giving you at plus 210, I think you got to take the extra sense that you're getting in those plus odds. He's currently sitting on a four-game point streak, but... He's got three goals and three assists over the course of those games. One of the things I look for, a little uh, Nate Hockey Betting 101 here, when I see guys on point streaks, I'm not looking for somebody who's got four points in four games, right? I mean, I understand that is a point streak. I'm looking for somebody that's peppering it even more than that. So I like the fact that McCann's actually got six points over the course of that four-game streak that he's on because it shows him heavily involved. And again, three of them have actually found the back of the net. So over at BetMGM, Jared McCann at home tonight against the Blues uh, as uh, Seattle tries to get it done uh, at Climate Pledge Arena. Uh, Give me that anytime goal at a plus 210 for for Mr. McCann. All right, let's go to the world of college basketball. Let's uh, stack some greenbacks on a wager available right now at DraftKings. And looking ahead to the Final Four, Purdue, uh, the odds-on favorite uh, to reach uh, the makeup of college basketball, open at plus 100, even money. 
there at DraftKings. And I think it's a, an advisable investment. I know what you're thinking. Uh, this is the same team, you dumbass, that lost to Fairleigh Dickinson last year in round number one. Uh, there's clearly been a motivation of the Boilermakers uh, to, you know, resurrect themselves in the uh, college basketball postseason and say, hey, that was a blip on the radar. We're going to be A-OK. They have the Wooden Award winner, uh, likely going to be surefire in Zach Eady. Uh, and what's different about this team is the athleticism at the guard position. Cam Jones is a massive upgrade because he's a shot maker and a guy that can really uh, create, and that is critical for this team. They had some slow guards last year. A lot of those guys still on the roster, and Gillis, and Lawyer and Braden Smith, uh, but they're outstanding ancillary players, Zach Eady, that they defend. Uh, they can really hoist it you know, up and do it consistently and efficiently, evidenced by the number 14 rating in EFG offense on the season, also number 46 in EFG defense or top 11 in offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency, according to KimBomb.com. Uh, of course, uh, with Zach Eady there, the man in the middle, they generate so many second-chance opportunities that really just dominate the class. As long as he can stay out of foul trouble, they should make a very deep run in the NCAA tournament. Hell, they could win the whole damn thing if you want to take it a step further and get it more plus money. You can absolutely do that. Uh, and I realize the Big Ten hasn't had a NCAA title winner since 2000, the Mateen Cleaves Michigan State squad. But what I also love about Purdue they have played a daunting, challenging schedule. Numero uno, according to net strength of schedule, they've beaten Gonzaga, Tennessee, Marquette, Alabama, Arizona, oh, who the Beavers also took down, as uh, Lundy outlined at the top of the uh, podcast, and my ILL. They just are racking up quality wins on the season. So I think it's going to really benefit them in the end, along with that overall balance. So, Boiler up, baby! Purdue to make the Final Four plus 100 there at DraftKings. With those bets on the board, let's get after it with another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. Numero Cinco here on the countdown, all NFL all the time. Let's get some more plus money on the board. And and he's so purdy, and I believe he will be in the box score. Give me Brock Purdy over two and a half. It's a high number there. Passing touchdowns. Uh, Best use in the industry right now at BetMGM at plus 155. Yeah, get seduced by that juice and get those shoulder rolls going. I need this is entirely achievable for Purdy. Now, uh, he's only done this five times over the entirety of the NFL season, but in the NFL regular season, he was number nine in red zone pass attempts, and he was numero dos in red zone completion percentage. When he got Brandon Ayuk, when he got George Kittle, may or may not have Debo Samuel on the field. I don't think it's really going to matter because Juwan Jennings can step up and show out, and he got Christian McCaffrey, who can do it all at the running back position. Uh, I think this team is going to live inside the red zone. I think they're going to be markedly efficient in that area of the field. Why? Because they look at the Lions, number 28 in pass EPA defense since week 12. Uh, they have allowed a handful, five in total passers to throw at least three touchdowns in a game, including Baker Baker, who is indeed a touchdown maker last week so brock purdy over two and a half passing touchdowns plus 155 at bet mgm lundy fair to follow i will fade you right out of the gate my friend he's not going to wind up with two and a half passing touchdowns i think he's going to get dose i think he will get mm. the two don't like him for the third uh i think there will be some uh we're gonna we're gonna hit the dairy farm brad we're going to be milking the clock, milking the <laughs> clock uh, down the stretch. And so I think he's going to miss out on the third one because of that. So I'm going to fade you on this one. I do not believe that he gets to three. Do believe he gets to two, but I don't think three is the magic number. Yar, shiver me timbers. Screw you, Captain Hook. Number four. All right, Numo Quattro here on the Fade of Five podcast. Uh, Action Jackson, and I say it's going to be with the legs. Give me the over the alt market available at ESPN Bet. 70 or more rush yards. You get that right now at plus 110 and early. Bonus time, bonus time, Lundy. If you think that Jackson's going to achieve uh, at least 70 yards on the ground, take him as well for most rushing yards of any player in the AFC Championship, and you can get that right now at DraftKings. 
uh, at plus 130. And I think also at ESPN bet at that same plus 130 number. But uh, both uh, honestly worth the investment. Uh, Lamar Jackson on the standard line, that number is at 64 and a half. I think he's got a sale pass it in five postseason games. He is a guy that usually puts it all on the line, the entire body, the arm and the legs. He is averaging 13 rush attempts per game, 93.4 rush yards per game over that five uh, game swath. And, you know, he went through a century mark effort last week. And again, Kansas City, in the regular season, the Chiefs allowed the second most rush attempts to quarterbacks of any team in the National Football League. That was 91 in total. Now, they only gave up 20.1 rush yards per game. But the reason why that number was so high, they were number two in pocket pressure rate so scripted and unscripted runs shall be plentiful for Lamar Jackson any throw in two since week 12 uh, the Chiefs a very middling number 17 and rush EPA defense so to recap to recap Lamar Jackson in the alt market 70 or more rush yards posted this at ESPN bet at plus 110 Lundy better follow uh, one of my bonus times is for him to have the most rushing yards in that game. Um, so I'll take yeah, the one ten. So uh, I'll scale it up. By the way, it's plus one thirty five at Caesars oh. um, for him to have the most rushing yards in the game. It's basically him versus Pacheco, uh, and I will take uh, Lamar. Uh, yep. I'll take it all day long. Um, so uh, this this to me is a no brainer. This to me is just like an escalator. You could take his regular number, then take the seventy. You could take uh, him for the most in the game. You could keep playing it and get the plus odds as you go. But yes, uh, one of my favorite bets of the weekend is for him to have the most rushing yards in that contest. Plus one three five. MVP, MVP, MVP. Number three. Yeah, that's right. A lot of MVP. I just could have kept going. Lenny said, shut up already and get to numero tres here on the fade of five at countdown. And let's work in a little SGP and more plus money on the board. Uh, get seduced by that juice. A uh, very simple a little two legger here. Give me the Ravens uh, straight up on the money line. Just win the game. And Justin Tucker over one and a half field goals made plus 180. Extraordinary value, in my opinion, there. Available at Bet MGM. Again, I think the Ravens are going to win this game. I had a, a ticket that I placed uh, two months ago uh, that the Super Bowl matchup was going to be Ravens and Niners, and I grabbed that at plus 800, so fingers and toes crossed. That one comes through, so I'm going to you know, quadruple down on this. Uh, you look at Baltimore since week 12, number four. And total EPA offense and number five in total EPA defense. Uh, Kansas City, a pair of 12s in both those categories. Uh, they have been terrible, but, you know, they have uh, some question marks. And it gives me some reservations about this team against such a stellar and stout opponent, as is uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and then you look at Justin Tucker. Well, obviously, you know, Clutch is his nickname. Uh, one of the best kickers uh, pretty much across the board, maybe in NFL history. Uh, he has gone over one and a half field goals made uh, in a game nine times, nine this season. He had 86.5% of his field goal opportunities in the regular season, had a pair of boots through the uprights last week. Six kickers have hit the over on one and a half first Kansas City this year. Uh, yes, Baltimore is a pretty efficient team inside the red zone. Number six in the NFL regular season and TD only red zone percentage. But if Kansas City's defense, yeah, I think they'll be bendable, be pliable at times. But if they can slow down Baltimore a couple of occasions, and maybe you have to pucker up and sweat the sucker out late, uh, could be for a game winner. I feel Justin Tucker will split the uprights at least a pair of times. So, again, on this SGP, Ravens, money line, Justin Tucker over one and a half field goals made, plus 180 at BetMGM. Lundy, better follow. I'm okay with both of these. I like the idea of the field goals made for him. So I'm, you know, again, it, it, you're talking about the best kicker in the history of the league. Um, so it, that part I'm fine with. I'm with you on Baltimore. Actually, at the beginning of the playoffs, I dropped uh, a ticket on them to win it all. Yeah. So I'm with you. You know how much I hate futures. So that tells you how much I liked what I was seeing <laughs> out of Baltimore. Um, so with all of those put together, yeah, I like combining these two and getting yourself at plus odds. I like them individually as well. 
um, or Baltimore money line built into a lot of different things. I think this is where um, the Mahomes magic, even though I think we're going to see some of it this weekend, I think this is where the scoreboard magic is done and Baltimore advances. So uh, put all of that together. Uh, this one plus 180 at BetMGM, solid play. Oh, he's an opera singer. He's an all-time kicker. I'm back in the leg of Justin Tucker. Number two. Numero dos here on the Feed 5 NFL Championship Edition of the pod. Brandon Ayuk and uh, give me most receiving yards in the game at plus 170. I put this together at DraftKings Sportsbook. And I don't think any other book, maybe Caesars has something. So Lundy can um, scurry and try to look that up for me on the same prop. But uh, some of their books did not have this posted because I think everybody is waiting on the availability of Debo Samuel. But. If you don't want to take advantage, uh, plus 170 is uh, awfully enticing. I could not ignore it. He should go off in this game with or without Debo Samuel in uniform. You look at Ayuk, uh, going to get a lot of Kendall Vildor. That is his projected primary assignment of coverage, who was allowed in the NFL postseason a 140.5 passer rating and 60.7% catch rate. He had north of a 60% catch rate in the NFL regular season. Uh, Detroit as a collective, I already mentioned this, number 28 in pass EPA defense since week 12. So they've been quite leaky, giving up, uh, you know, chunk gains down the field. And that's a specialty of Brandon Ayuk in the NFL regular season. Number two in yards per reception at 17.9. Number three in yards per route run. And he was number 18 in total yak. Uh, that was his nickname in college at Arizona State, the Yak King. And he has got to don a bejeweled crown, in my opinion, and lead this game in receiving yards at plus 170 at DraftKings. The only really deterrent in my mind here is if Detroit gets blown out early, uh, maybe Ayuk doesn't get a whole lot of opportunities late in the game, and that means throw, throw, and throw some more Jared Goff to maybe Amon Ross St. Brown or somebody else. Uh, But still, I do love this bet. I have it on my spreadsheet. I've locked and loaded it, so fade or follow me. That is always up to you. Lundy, fader, follow me as well on Iuke. Most receiving yards in the game, plus 170 at DraftKings. What do you say, me, amigo? Um, my problem is exactly what you just said. I already told you that I think we're going to the dairy farm and we're milking clock um, <laughs> when it comes later. Uh, and that worries me about um, Iuke being able to get yards in the fourth quarter. Um, so you're going to have to hope that some of those numbers hit or he does a big one to be able to start. You talked about Caesars. They have this prop at plus 165. Um, so they're just off by five cents from what you're seeing at DraftKings. Um, the other issue that I've got, as we said, is the game script kinds of things. If Goff is having to look downfield, now you got Amon Ross St. Brown, who could wind up at, say, 85, 90, 95, yeah. 100. Not necessarily because Detroit's running away with the game, but because they need him. To give you an idea, at least at Caesars right now, Ayuk is at plus 165. Amon Ross St. Brown is at plus 130. So you've got mm. plus odd. Those are the two top favorites in terms of having the most yards. Um, so I would tell you, folks, um, take your pick. Of, I think it's going to be one of those two guys. I mean, if you follow game script, regardless of what this game looks like, it's likely going to be one of those two guys. Um, and I believe that whether Debo Samuel plays or not. So with that in mind, t- pick your poison. If you want to, folks, you could wait until you truly know the status of Debo Samuel. If he's out there, maybe you lean into the Amon Ross St. Brown bet at the plus 130 that I was telling you that Caesars is sitting on. One of those two, I think, is going to be it. I would say pick your poison. For me personally, Brad, I would lean into St. Brown. I would. That would Why be not my both. Pick. That would be profit. my pick. Exactly. And that's what I was going to say. It, because you're looking at plus 130 and 165 at Caesars, it means if you throw a unit on each one of those, you're going to come out ahead one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly that's right. It. Maybe that's a smart way to play it. Uh, by the way, milk the clock. I'll gladly suck on it, Utter. Number one. Numero uno here on the feed of five NFL championship Sunday countdown. Kittles and bits. George Kittle anytime touchdown is my top play. It's let chamber worthy at plus 120 there at ESPN. But actually, I'm kind of shocked. Uh, this is at plus money. I thought for sure it was going to be like minus 105, minus 110, maybe even slightly higher than that because Kittle, 
has been killing it here down the home stretch. As I've already outlined, Detroit, woeful defensively defending the pass. Uh, number 28 in pass EPAD, as I remind you, since week 12. And in the NFL regular season, for you fantasy fans out there, you already know this, they were inside the top 10 and most fantasy points allowed to plus size targets. They gave up specifically uh, five catches per game, 56.2 yards per game, and six touchdown to the tight end position. Uh, you look at Kittle uh, in the NFL regular season, number three in total yak. Numero uno in yards per route run. He was number 10 in total red zone targets. Uh, and then last week, he went absolutely ballistic on the bay as he led up the Packers. Seven targets, four catches, 81 yards, and a touchdown. I think it's going to be more of the same. Take it advantage of what the defense gives them, and they're going to roll out the red carpet uh, for George Kittle, which is appropriate given that is in the color scheme of the 49ers. So George Kittle, anytime touchdown, my top play of this championship weekend, plus 120 at ESPN bet. Lundy, fade or follow. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to speak on behalf of all of our, all of our fans, which is like three of, I think. <laughs> Two and a half. Um, could be, could be something along those lines. Uh, I'd <laughs> like to point out, on the fade five here that David Montgomery has not made an appearance. Uh, I'm worried about him. Uh, in fact, I would probably lean on the under on rush yards. I saw that number. I think it's in the low fifties and I'm not tailing him on any time touchdown. I am unwell. Really? Yeah. I'm like, like I'm fine with Kittle, by the way. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to ignore your number one play. I'm just trying to figure out what the F happened to David Montgomery. How, how in the world, Brad, are you expecting us to ride this <laughs> wave with you all flipping season long? And then you're going to and, and then you're just going to leave us hanging when it's all on the line. What the hell, man? What the well, hell, Brad? Look, listen, you know, I am uh, the guy that's always driving the hashtag mandatory Montgomery train. And I'm sorry, right. David, I love you, but I don't like the matchup. I just don't. Uh, but I tell you what, Lundy. You know what we need? And more, uh, not really uh, apologetic, but unapologetic wager. So let's get to it. It's bonus time here on the feed. Five countdown, uh, whether it's in the NFL, the NHL, the NBA, or college basketball. Actually, a couple of really interesting games on a Friday night slate. And I'm going to have a pick uh, possibly in both of those. And looking ahead to Saturday, I'm going to have a ton, a shit ton of bets uh, once a line's post uh, on my always free, always accessible spreadsheet at Noisy Cuevos on the X. But Lundy, please share what else is on your card. <laughs> you're having uh, you're having way too much fun today. You really I, are. Like, dude, it's, I it's triple wild. espresso shot. I'm feeling great. You're like you're. It, it's crazy because you're like in a you're in a good mood, but you're also not like completely uh, you know off your off your rocker today. Um, and I don't really know exactly what to do with that. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Um, I feel like grinding on a random pole. What? Yeah. What the yeah, hell really? are you talking about? What the yeah, hell? The All shirt's right. coming off and I, the dad bot's coming out. Let's play. I don't even know. I don't even know what to do. Uh, I don't even know what to do with that. Uh, let me take you to the association briefly. Uh, this has been juiced up. Uh, if you can find somebody uh, out there that is going to give you slightly better odds, or if you want to same game parlay this into something, I don't know how much longer. Uh, the books are going to continue to put put uh, Wembenyama's uh, blocks plus steals at three and a half. Uh, Over! They're, play they're playing the Blazers tonight, folks, at Over! home. Uh, in the Alamo City. So whatever it is, take the over. But like I said, it's juiced. So go find another prop you want to put it with. Maybe find a way to SGP that thing. I don't know how much longer they're going to leave the number at three and a half. Can I make a suggestion uh, for sure. a, a little SGP parlay? Take Wimby over on May threes uh, in the yeah. online market, whether one or two. He's usually good right now for a couple. And I feel like this game, I think it was like uh, around 220 in the first matchup. I think it's going to be even more higher scoring than that prior matchup. Yeah, so keep an eye on that. Wemby's a guy kind of like Jokic. You can do the over a half a made three um, yep. and, you know, put that in with other stat lines. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, just something to play. I just wanted to jump into the association there for a minute because I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how much longer they're going to leave that line at three and a half. Uh, with the way everybody wants to be able to try to pound it. Um, in terms of same game parlays, not every book's going to let you play this. Maybe you can find it as a pre-built SGP. 
I talked about it off the uh, top when we were talking about the NHL. Um, folks, Nathan McKinnon is on another planet right now in the National Hockey League. And um, I've been able, I, I'm a season ticket holder for the Avs. I've been able to enjoy it for quite a while now uh, right here in Denver. Um, right now, he's the best player in the world. Um, he's doing shit that people like, let me give you, let me just throw this out there if you're not a hockey fan, just real quick. Okay. In the history of the Avalanche, all right, since the Avalanche have been here in Denver, they were the Quebec Nordiques before they moved here to Denver, okay, back in 95 or whatever the hell the year was. No one, no one in the history of the franchise had scored four goals in a single game. McKinnon's done it twice in the last 34 days. Wow. Okay, that's the kind of shit he's doing right now. It is absolutely unreal. So here's what I was going to tell you. If you get the opportunity, they're taking on the Kings tonight. I think this might be like a three to one type of game, four to one type of game. But if you can find a way to same game parlay him for a goal and an assist, do it. They have had 24 home games this year. He has a point in all 24 games. Okay. If, I, if memory serves, the only player in the history of the NHL that has ever done that for an entire season at home is the great one. It's Gretzky. So what he's doing right now is absolutely unworldly, and it's a shit ton of fun to watch. Um, in hockey, because there's only four games, I don't have a lot for you. I'll have it for the spreadsheet a little bit later. I gave you the one in the association. Brad, how about this for some fun with Lamar? I want to know what you think about this one because I really, really like this. Um Lamar Jackson to have the most rushing yards on Sunday. Forget just the forget just the game against the Chiefs. Across the board, the most rushing yards. And obviously, you got to be worried about CMC. But if San Francisco gets up, Christian could be watching this one from the sidelines. Plus 450. I've dropped a half unit wow. bet on that just in case. Um, and I've seen it at plus 400. I've seen it at plus plus. Uh, 390, but I snagged it at plus 450 um, over at uh, Caesars, if I remember right. I got to go back and look um, at which book I took it. But not only did I think it was worth sprinkling a bet on, but it was a difference of 60 points if you shop around. So plus 450 for him to actually lead the weekend in rushing. I'm a really big fan of that. A couple more that I want to go to uh, in the Kansas City Baltimore game. How about Excuse me. How about both teams to score 20 or more plus 144 over at FanDuel? If you look at the history between these two, um, I do believe that Baltimore um, can play some solid defense. Frankly, I think both of these teams could, but I also don't know how you keep these two offenses out of the end zone. So again, both teams to score 20 or more. It's plus 140 at DraftKings. It's plus 144 over at FanDuel. Looking at the evening contest, well, I guess evening or afternoon, depending upon your time zone. Um, let me talk about Brock Purdy to throw a pick. I'll take it at plus 105. I think he's going to make a mistake at some point. I think he's come a little bit back down to earth. I still think he's fantastic. He's a great story, but the competition steps up in the playoffs. I say he makes a mistake, and I'll take that at a plus 105. But if you really want to get crazy with the cheese whiz, take him and Goff to both throw an INT, and you can snag that one at plus 260 over at Caesars. That is because you've got Purdy at plus odds. Uh, Goff is a minus 150 to throw one himself. So you package those two together and you'll take it at a plus 260. Um, let me alt line both games at plus odds at DraftKings. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, I'm going to do this one. This is confusing, folks. Grab your pen. Are you ready? Brad, you with me? You with yeah, me? With you. Okay. I got to give everybody a chance to do it. First of all, take Kansas City plus 10 and a half and under 54 and a half in the game. Kansas City plus 10 and a half under 54 and a half in the contest then take detroit plus 14 and a half just keep it within two touchdowns lions that's all i need you to do and take the over at 42 and a half in that game that sgp plus sgpx everybody calls it something different uh, across the books is a plus 171. I built my version at DraftKings. You're going to be within spitting distance of those odds across the board. So again, KC plus 10 and a half and under 54 and a half and Detroit plus 14 and a half and the over at 42 and a half. So I essentially teased just a little bit over a teaser, but I basically teased uh, both games and got it up into that plus 170 range. So I like the idea of being able to play 
uh, that one and have a little bit of fun. I will yield the floor to the fine gentleman who apparently doesn't want to bet on David Montgomery from Illinois. Hey, again, I'm sickly right now, quite feverish. Uh, and I got a fever. I need more cowbell or bats. Let's go to the team. Huevos parlay play of the weekend on this SGP. And come with me if you are buying what I am selling. Simple three legger built at ESPN bet at a plus 152 juice. I'm a raw, 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 raw. St. Brown, six or more receptions. George Kittle, again, who I like him in the anytime touchdown market. There's one catch. I need two more, three or more receptions. And Jameer Gibbs, three or more receptions. Again, plus 152 at ESPN. But Ahmad Ross got uh, 53 targets this last five games. He's going to be a centerpiece. Probably going to be scoreboard chasing in this contest. As Lundy and I have already discussed, he has gone over the needed number here in six straight games. And to get a lot of Lenore and coverage, he's given up a 68.9% catch rate to his assignments. Uh, Kittle, again, has been... Going off here of late, I'm not going to give any additional reasons why I feel he's got to catch three or more balls. And then you look at Jameer Gibbs, three or more receptions. Uh, he is a player uh, running a ton of routes. Uh, he's got 19 targets his last five games. He's got around 15 to 20 targets per game during that stretch. He's gone over in four of his last five. He's got eight catches in back-to-back postseason games in total. And then San Francisco uh, in the NFL regular season, 5.3 receptions per game allowed to the running back position. That was the fifth most in the National Football League. And they gave up four to pass catching running backs last week of Green Bay. So to recap, to recap, all the team Waples parlay play on this SGP. I'm on Ross St. Brown, six or more catches. George Kittle, three or more catches. Jameer Gibbs, three or more receptions, plus 152 there. At ESPN Bet. Elsewhere in bonus time, bonus time. Uh, we're going to get a couple of simple SGPs here on the board in both these playoff games. Uh, Kansas City, Baltimore. Give me the Ravens on the money line, and I'll take the under and the all total 54 and a half. So you and I are symbiotic in that belief. You put those hands together, plus 105. Detroit, San Francisco. Now kind of follow me on this. I'm going to live in the middle. I got San Francisco minus two and a half. And Detroit plus 17 and a half, both those being all spread. So will San Francisco effectively win this game between three and 17? I say, yes, they do. You put those together plus 100 even money there at BetMGM. Uh, and then finally, uh, in this game, Mark Andrews, give me him for any time touchdown. We'll see if he plays. I think he will. He's gotten full practices in all week. It's plus 200 at MGM that he has an end zone spike in his return to the lineup. And you know Lamar Jackson loves peppering him with targets inside the red zone and, and or the end zone. So I like him on an any time touchdown. All right, uh, let's go with the NBA on this Friday night. SGP. Uh, we got the Orlando Magic taking on the Memphis Grizzlies uh, there in Memphis. Uh, I'm going to take the Magic plus five and a half in the old uh, spread market. Give me Paolo Bancaro, 50 or more points. And Jalen Suggs, this is going to be key in this parlay hitting. I need one block. Plus 220 in a bet MGM if you put all three of those together. Uh, Memphis, uh, three and seven straight up in the last 10 home games. Orlando, seven and three ATS. And again, they're catching five and a half in this old spread in their last 10 on the road. Memphis, meanwhile, they are number 13 in fewest points per game allowed. But Bancaro has hit the over on 50 or more points in 17 of his last 18 games. He's averaging 24.8 points per game here in the month of January. And then Suggs, meanwhile, the Grizz have allowed the most opponent blocks per game at 6.7 of anybody in the NBA. And Suggs, yeah, he's only got four blocks in total here in January. But he's averaging 0.7 blocks per game on the season. So hopefully he'll get a swat. I'm maximizing the matchup there. So Orlando plus five and a half. Van Carroll, 15 or more points. Suggs with that one swat plus 220 there at Bet MGM. And then finally in college basketball, I love living in the middle on some of these SGPs. They can build at Bet MGM. And Bet MGM is the best book by far to build some of these, Lundy. So follow along with me on this one. Michigan State and Wisconsin are playing in a very important Big Ten matchup on a Friday night. It's a very light slate. Uh, it's certainly a marquee game there in Madison. And I'm going to live there in the middle. So here's how I'm playing it. Uh, I'm going to go Wisconsin plus 7.5 in the alt-line market. Michigan State at plus 12.5 
in the alt-line market. So either team can win just uh, by eight or more points. And I'm going to slam the under on the all total 147 and a half. Uh, both these teams outside the top 275 and adjust in tempo. Uh, both really hang their hat on defense. So Wisconsin has been a little bit leaky in that uh, capacity, which is odd for them this season. But if that under 147 and a half hits and nobody uh, wins by more than eight points, plus 105 at BetMGM. I hit four of four of these last night doing the same damn thing in college basketball. So I've been experimenting with living in the middle. And, man, it's been profitable for me. So we'll hopefully keep the gravy train rolling on those wagers. I'm out of breath. We're out of time here on the Feed at Five podcast. Do us a favor. Drop us a rating and a review at your convenience. It helps us out immensely. Give us a thumbs up as well. If you're watching us in animated picture and sound on YouTube, also fade or follow us on the X. Uh, Lundy's always giving it to you with his free spreadsheet picks at Nate Lundy. I do the same damn exercise at Noisy Huevos for the stunningly gorgeous Nathaniel Lundy with great hair who is still partying with his beeves. Uh, they're slapping their tails. I can't believe they beat Arizona last night in Corvallis. Uh, Wildcats up on on some hard times, to say the least. I'm Brad Evans. Until next time, as always, feed or follow. That is up to you. Sorry, mandatory Montgomery.